Good morning, this is Dr. Jingbo Louise Liu from Texas A&M University, Kingsville. So this lab number eight will discuss thermodynamics. You're going to have uh, different goals. So two objectives, essentially speaking. Students will determine the solubility product KSP of your borax as a function of different temperatures. The second one, students will determine the standard Gibbs free energy change, delta G, standard enthalpy change, delta H, standard entropy change, delta S, delta G, delta H, and delta S changes. Fold this solution of sodium borax in an aqueous solution. Particularly, what you are going to do, you are going to determine the borax and the molar solubility of its compound at five different temperatures. Again, you are going to use a standard so, uh, uh, hydrochloric acid to do the titration. And then you calculate the solubility product of the borax at different temperature. And then plot a graph of your lean KSP as a function of one divided by T of your measurement. And then from the plot, you are going to determine delta H, delta S, and then delta T, you can calculate it. So that's essentially about the experiment number eight. And then in this case, let's take a look about your borax. The borax is a large deposition the large deposition of this borax, usually in the United States, found in the Death Valley, in Mojave Desert in California. The borax is, is mined as either tinkle or kernite. Your tinkle, you have eight hydrates. So sodium borax octahydrates. If you have kernite, you have four different, uh, different uh, hydrates but they have little different forms. In our case, we are going to study the first one. The use of this borax can be very diversified. You can use it for cleansing agent, manufacturing of glazing paper, and flux in soldering and breathing. So what you are going to do, you are going to calculate the KSP. The KSP, again, is expressed for the chemical system in the equilibrium when the reactant and the product in their standard state. For very insoluble salt in the aqueous solution, the precipitate corresponding to the reactants and the ions in the solution of your product. So precipitate, usually precipitate, you consider that's your reactant. Your two different ions, such as sodium and borax, these ions, they are essentially considered as a product. So this compound, sodium borax, you consider it a reactant. So you write it down your KSP again, based on this balanced equation. Sodium, you have two, two coefficient. KSP equals sodium to the power two and borax to the, to the power one, because it is a two to one molar ratio. Your delta G equals negative RT times lean KSP. So from this equation, if you determine the, your KSP, you can calculate delta G at that particular equation, at that particular, sorry, temperature. Since your free, gives free energy change is a function of your enthalpy change and entropy change for the progress, you also can calculate it. So delta G can be also calculated by using delta H minus T delta S. In terms of the thermodynamics, again, I want to recall three different perspectives. Number one, the delta G free gives free energy of a chemical process is proportional to the equilibrium constant uh, I should say it's proportional to the logarithm of equilibrium constant. Delta G at the standard state, delta G naught equals negative RT lean K. This 
R is your ideal gas constant, which is 8.314 joules per mole per Kelvin, or 8.314 times 10 to the power negative 3 kilojoules per mole per Kelvin. This temperature is called absolute temperature in Kelvin. This K represents your KSP, which is the equilibrium constant, which is a solubility product constant. Don't forget this negative sign. You have negative RT in K. Your Gibbs free energy is G. The change in Gibbs free energy delta G is a measure of the spontaneity of your process and of the useful energy available from the process. Delta G also for your system equals delta H minus T delta S for your system. So if you have delta G which is smaller than zero, this reaction of this process is spontaneous, meaning naturally occurring. If delta G is positive, this process is non-spontaneous. If delta G is zero, you consider this equilibrium is reached. Your delta G for a particular reaction can be also calculated in a different way. Delta G can be calculated using the delta G for your product. This one is a sigma. This is a sigma. This is the sum. For some reason, it changed. So the sum of your product, delta G, minus the sum of your reactant delta G. This smaller n, smaller m represent the coefficient for the associated reactants and the products. Again, this capital S represents the sigma sum. And then in the experiment, you are going to determine delta G, delta H, delta S for the aqueous solution of the solubility of your tinko. So this 4x uh, uh, octahydrates. So the balanced reaction for this chemical, uh, for this reaction, for this uh, particularly insoluble compounds. So you write it down as a tinkle solid plus uh, produce two moles of your sodium aqueous and one mole of your 4x negatively charged ions and eight moles of water. Your water liquid and this 4x compound solid is not going to be in your expression of your KSP. Your solubility product expression KSP only composed of the sodium and the 4x negative ion. Sodium to the power 2, 4x concentration. And then you can determine your link K. So combining the equations, combining the equations so you can rearranging your lean k. Your lean k, actually delta g equals uh, negative rt lean k, delta g equals, uh, let me go back, delta g also equals uh, delta h minus delta t, you combine this equation and this thermodynamic equation. So you are going to receive, oops, you combine these two equations, you get a new one. Del uh, lean k equals negative delta h divided by R divided by your temperature plus delta S divided by R. So from the plot of your lean KSP as a function of one divided by T, you can determine your slope. So M represent your slope. The slope equals your negative delta H divided by R. You can also determine your Y intercept. It's called the, that B that y-intercept equals your delta S divided by R. Therefore, you can calculate delta H, delta S, and then further calculate your delta G. That's about your balanced reaction. So again, this 4x, this negatively charged ion is a conjugate base of your weak boric acid. So this boric acid is capable Oh, this uh, you can see this negatively charged ion is capable to accepting two different protons. So therefore, you are going to again use the titration curve to determine the amount of your 4x. 
So molar solubility for your sodium borax is the same as this negative ion, two times of your sodium. This table essentially listed the molar solubility of this, this borax at the different temperatures for your reference. And then again, we are going to rewrite your balanced reaction. So your KSP, again, equals four times molar solubility to the power six. Again, write down your balanced reaction, construct your SEE. Balanced reaction, initial change and equilibrium, you can derive your KSP expression. In this case, KSP equals four to the S to the power three, four times S molar solubility to the power three. So that's how you are going to do the calculation. So again, you are going to essentially follow the lab procedure to do the titration. So I want to mention, so your hydrochloric acid must be standardized. So I think our stockroom staff already standardized this one. Your borax, you need to measure it, and then you need some burette, beakers, and the Meyer flask test tubes. When you working on the titration, make sure you swirl your urn and flask and your burette titration, make sure the solution is going to be titrated drop wisely. At this point, I think our class is adjourned. Thank you so much. Stay safe and healthy.